First of all, let's jump into company information. You can see that I'm on it right now and how you navigate to it is setup, company and company information. And this is where you're going to be putting all your essential information that you will be showing on your NetSuite account. So we have our company name and this is just a demo account. So it's demo anchor group and we have our legal name your company logo that's going to be used on your forms and then pages and this display logo internally if I have that logo displayed in pages right here and have display logo internally checked it puts this logo right up here so that it shows up on all my pages within NetSuite so it's a good way to brand your NetSuite environment you also have your website and your county state and province that you have your business located in you can also set your return email address that you'll be using for your company, as well as all your other essential information like your fax number, your tax numbers, and your fiscal year. This is a good one to set to make sure it's accurate. This is an accounting software, so you want to get your fiscal year set up properly. You should also set your time zone to where your company is located and where you want your NetSuite information to be logged at. For instance, let's say you have a sales order go through just a couple seconds ago in central time and I'm in central time so I would see my clock down here at 0703 p.m. and inside of NetSuite it would actually show 503 so that can be a little confusing for users that are in different time zones than what you'd be expecting just be aware of it for when you're looking at logs your account ID is your specific NetSuite instance and it will also show up in the URL right up here too you're going to want to get your company address set up too because this will show up in things like advanced PDFs and email templates where you might have an invoice go out and you have a company address set. The company URLs tab here has a lot of useful links to what people will be using when they're setting up your NetSuite environment. Restlets are a way to integrate NetSuite to other third-party applications. For instance, let's say that you have Salesforce that you want to integrate. Well, you can use an integrator, but you can also make a custom integration using RESTlets. Or you can make SOAP calls too, but this is a good RESTlet is a great way to do NetSuite APIs. The customer center login URL right here is what B2B companies will often use for other people to create orders or to make payments. And the way this works is let's look at my demo website here. And I have a login or create an account via my website and I'm actually in it right now it's the username is test1234 and so I'm gonna log in instead of the website because let's assume that you don't have sweet commerce or a website because it's just not part of your business model but you still want them to be able to log in to access information inside of the NetSuite environment without seeing everything else in your NetSuite environment you can set this up right here this customer setter login so anybody that's set up as a customer in your account and has the right rules and permissions, then they'll be able to log in. I'm going to go ahead and click this and I'm going to log into this test one, two, three, four. Okay. I'm now logged in to this test customer account and this is all the permissions that your customer would have right out of the box. So they can enter an order, see orders, see estimates. They may have applied to their account, even make payments, see so quite a few things that are related just to their specific customer account. Now these permissions can be changed, but these are the ones that come right out of the box for this customer center login. Next, I wanna go into the general preferences. We're gonna go into setup, company, and then down here to general preferences. And this is where we're gonna be putting all the things specific to our company and how we want the preferences set up for NetSuite. You can see that there's date formats, long date formats, time formats, all the different types of formatting within the system. There's also defaulting so that whenever I go into a specific new record, it can make some automatic defaults. Let's look over here at this customer type. Default customer type to a company rather than an individual. And what this means, if I go and try and create a new customer over here, it lists relationships, customers, new, it'll default into the company rather than an individual. There you go. You can see that the type is a company rather than an individual. And I could set this to a different default customer type to an individual. That way they could enter in 
their first name, last name, rather than a company name. So you can do this with several things like the vendor, the partner, and there's a lot of other different types of defaults you can set specific for your company. You can set some security measures inside your general preferences, like the password policy. You can change it from weak, medium, or strong. If your employees are making their own passwords, you can make sure they're using a recommended method to reset them. And you can set them to weak, medium, or strong. You can override your company preferences within your own personal preferences, and we're gonna cover that in another lesson, but you can define which ones you want to be able to override right here. You can also define things in the centers, custom preferences, and accounting contexts.